Hi, it's Chester Topple at Blue PK and Computer Training, and in this video, we're looking at creating a dynamic range. So, a dynamic range is one that automatically grows or collapses uh, to uh, reflect the number of records that have been added or removed from a data set. So, this might be useful for a pivot table, for formulas, or for charts. So, we're going to use this data to create a pivot table. A classic way of creating a dynamic range is to convert the range into a table. So if I go to insert and then table or control T, that converts the range into an Excel table, which is dynamic. So if I added records to the table, the pivot tables data source automatically grows with it. So let's see that work in action. So um, if I go insert pivot table, table range, table two, I'm putting it on an existing worksheet. So if I added player and score, then if I add Boris, 900, refreshed it, it would pick Boris up. Now, the problem comes though, if I delete Boris, refresh, I get this blank. So what I'd have to do is manually decrease the size of the table and then refresh. So I want to look at another method we could use that would prevent us having to manually reduce the size of the table as we had to there. Okay, so I've got another set of data precisely the same. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little formula using the offset function. And this, this offset function um, returns a range. And that range could be made to be dynamic, whether it grows or whether it reduces in size. So this is the benefit over a table. So the first argument is reference. So that would be our starting point. And you need to make that an absolute reference uh, because of what we're going to be doing later. Don't always have to use absolute references with the offset function, but if you're using it for a data source for like a pivot table or a chart, you will have to. Then what you're doing is you're saying from that reference point, how many rows or columns do you want to move down or across uh, as your starting point? Now, we want to include D1 uh, within the range that we want to return, so we don't want to move any rows or columns down and across. So. Both of those should be zero. So I could put zeros in, but I'm just going to put commas in instead, and that will default to zero. So the rows and columns argument we set at zero. Now this is the important bit, the height. So the height of the range is going to change as we remove or add records. So we need to this be this we need this to be dynamic. So we're going to use the count a function. Well, what the count a function does is count the number of cells that are not empty. So we want to do that for the whole of column D, and we'll fix that reference. So the height of the range is going to be defined by this count A function, comma. The width is always two columns in our scenario, but you could do another count A to count the number of columns you've included in your, your data set. Okay, so if I press enter, now this display of all the data may not, it probably won't occur in your version of Excel. Uh, this, I'm recording this on the 28th of November 2019, and I'm in the Excel Insiders program, which gives you like new features in Excel. Um, and what this does is it has spilled the array of values, the range that has been returned by the offset function into the surrounding cells. If you have a non-insiders version of Excel or you don't have Office 365, it won't do that. It'll probably give you an error. Now, don't worry if you get an error. The important bit is, is to select the formula that's been, uh, that displays in the formula bar and copy it. So Control-C to copy. Then what you're going to have to do is create a named reference to that formula. So you go up to the Formulas tab on your ribbon, Name Manager, and ignore these. That's what I've been playing around with before. We're going to create 
So I'm going to delete that one because we're going to use that same name. So we're going to say new. We're going to call this scores. And refers to, I'm going to paste in my formula. Click on OK. And then close that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the pivot table. So I click into my data, insert pivot table. And the source for my pivot table, just delete that. I'm going to press F3 on my keyboard and I'm going to paste in the scores name. You could type it in if you know what the name is. I've used, used F3 to paste it in. So I'm going to place the pivot table on existing worksheet. So I'll add my fields. So, and then what I'll do is I'll add Boris to the data set. 900. Refresh this. Boris appears. Delete Boris. Refresh. Boris disappears. I don't get that blank row appearing in my pivot table. Okay, thank you very much for listening. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.